What's up, everybody? Welcome back to episode five of the Fight House podcast. It's me, Jason Sutcliffe, here with Tristan Ketty. And we got a great week lined up for you guys. Three guests, all of them 22, all of them undefeated. Young guns, prospects. We're going to get it. First, we got Jordan Young, uh, Bellator prospect, coming off a huge win this weekend. Uh, then we got Jerome Rivera. He's coming off a huge win with LFA uh, over Zach Riley. He had a rough first round. Crazy dominant for the rest of the fight, though. And finally, last but not least, we got AJ McKee, the mercenary. So he's going to be here fresh off a, a big victory. and a Spectacular uh, knockout. Oh, my God. And, he, you know, he's he's got things on his mind. He's looking towards, you know, James Gallagher and them things. He had a couple comments to make. Looking forward to that conversation. So everyone tune in. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with Jordan Young. See you soon. The winner by submission, Jordan. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Fight House. We're here live with Jordan Young, a Bella, uh, one of the Bellator's top up-and-coming prospects. What's going on, Jordan? How you doing, buddy? Good, bro. How you doing? Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, man. Great fight this weekend, man. Good performance. How Were you happy I with it? How'd you feel it. about it? Man, I felt good. I wish I would have uh, put the hands on him a little more, but I felt he was, uh, I want to say, yeah, he was running away. Honestly, he was throwing some leg kicks and, and uh, pulling away when I would go to throw my punches, so... Uh, I just stayed patient, and when the opportunity came, you know, I was able to drop him and then secure that that finish. So overall, I'm happy, man. I can't complain. I'm healthy. True. How much did those leg kicks bother you, man? Were they were they affecting you at all? Uh, you used to say it one more time. I said, how much were those leg kicks affecting you? Were they bothering you at all? Uh, not too much, man. That seems to be what a lot of these guys want to do with me. I'm tall, you know what I mean. I'm lanky, and uh, it's easier for them to reach me with their their legs and their arms, but. Those leg kicks do not bother me by by any means. I'm I'm basing into them. I'm 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 letting them graze by and hit the knee. I mean, I'm aware I'm aware that they're coming, but uh, I haven't I haven't had any hit me that I'm like, oh man, I don't want to deal with that. You know? Right, right. You know, one thing I noticed in there, man, it's probably one of the most impressive things about your game, is how relaxed you are. Like it looked like if you were any calmer, you'd have been sleeping. You know what I mean? Like just moving so relaxed. Um, what do you attest that to, man? Is that just like how you how you like to carry yourself, or or what's your your how do how do you how do you just get that relaxed in the cage? Yeah, man. Uh, honestly, I like I like I like going with it. It's not a tense situation for me. A, a fight is a high stress environment for many. They they can't think multiple moves ahead. They're stuck right there on one thought. They don't want this to happen, or you know they're tense. They're Every time they go to punch, they tense up. For me, this is like, this is, this is what I do. You know what I mean? I love the human movement. I love to be smooth and efficient with what I'm doing. But also, I've been in the game since I was 15 years old, training with with pros. You know, even at 15, I was six one. You know what I mean? It's over 200 pounds. So, uh, I've always been training with the top guys in my area, wherever I'm at, um, at a high level. So I just feel with that, with that years of putting those rounds in in the gym it's not it's not such a big thing to me you know what i mean absolutely you know you're training speaking of your training you're up at american top team there i mean who did you have helping you get ready for this event i know you got a stable full of killers up there who, who are you spending your time your rounds with man uh for this last fight it was kind of short notice so i just put in a lot of work with my coaches we were getting uh just making sure that uh, our transitions were smooth and making sure that we had a a good idea of of, of what we wanted to utilize in this fight against this kid but um, at American Top Team, as far as training partners goes, you know, I have Rodolfo Vieira. I have, uh, I have Shoeface. He's a UFC light heavyweight. These mm-hmm. are both high-level black belts, and they're bigger than me, both of them. So when it comes to grappling, I'm getting great, great rounds with them. When it comes to, to sparring and striking, I get a lot of work with uh, Christoph Jarko. He's the number nine UFC-ranked middleweight in the world right now, getting mm-hmm. ready to fight David Branch, May 13th. And... Uh, I mean, outside of those three, uh, it just depends. Like, you know, when it comes to wrestling, we got uh, my boy Johnny from the zoo. He's a fucking animal. He'll he'll uh, he'll put you on your back in a heartbeat. So, I mean, we, there's so many guys. So, man, you're you're so quickly you're quickly establishing establishing yourself as a, as a uh, a killer of these undefeated records, man. You're snatching these up left, right, and center. That's two and two fights now that you've ended. Uh, you have any your eyes on any more undefeated fighters this day? You wouldn't mind ruining. <laughs> Man, when it comes to, I don't know about undefeated. Uh, honestly, what happened with Tim Karen, I actually called him out the week after I fought my fight in January, and uh, it wasn't anything personal. My little brother, Kobe Weber, uh, 
he's a beast, you know what I mean? Yep. He knows the fight game. Uh, he's only 16 years old, but, you know, he'll be online, you know, looking and just searching, seeing who's where. And then, you know, he'll look at the cards and say, oh, they're going here. You know, there's this kid here, and, you know, he has an undefeated record. He's from he's from that area. He's fought for Bellator in this area before. You should see if you can get it. You know what I mean? So I have him looking a little bit, and I also have my management, first-round management, you know. But at this moment in time, man, I'm happy to got got through that fight healthy, and I'm uh, I'm handling some some adult business now, you know what I mean, looking to go and get a, a vehicle off the lot and uh, take care of myself, do some things like that. So uh, Cash and I'm them in a pro good checks. spot right now. <laughs> Cashing yeah, on professional sure. checks. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, man. What kind of car are you looking at? Yeah. What are you doing with yourself outside of the cage, man? Uh, man, you know I got to have some style. It's definitely going to be <laughs> a, a newer year vehicle, but I'm thinking maybe like a Chevy. I might go with that Chevy, but uh, that Lexus is calling my name, I'll tell you what. All right, all right. <laughs> How many more fights you want to get in this year, man? Man, honestly, uh, so I signed a four-fight contract with Bellator for yep. a year and a half. The first six months, I had to sit still. They didn't have anything for me, and I was patient. I, I worked hard with American Top Team two, three times a day, every day, and uh, that's what's allowing me to be in such great shape now. But I got these two fights out of the way. I'd like to have a fight in August, and then I'd like to fight at the end of the year, and that would that would finish my contract out, and I would be in a great position to see what's out there for me. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm like a Beltor right now. I'd like to resign and continue to build my name. We'll see how they feel after these next couple performances. Well, it's got to feel good where you're sitting and know that you started there because they seem to be closing the gap on the UFC and they're doing it rapidly. Um, is it a comfortable feeling for you, like just knowing where you are and you're seeing how they're operating in the game and the moves that they're making? Yeah, for sure, man. They're, they're making the right moves. You see more and more people from the UFC coming over. And uh, honestly, something I like about Bellator, it's like a big family. You know, uh, It's not like I fought in the UFC to know how they mm -hmm. operate. But when I went into Bellator, um, the first time it was kind of like, they wanted to see what I had. Go in here and do your thing, kid, you know. So I went. I did my thing. I outclassed the undefeated hometown fighter, you know what I mean, 30-26 on the scorecard. And then the second time, though, uh, all the all the, all the the employees, I don't want to call them small employees, but we're not talking about Coker or, or Rich, you know what I mean, the matchmaker. But all, all of my homies, Ian Matthews, you know what I mean, Mike Johnson, everybody who runs everything behind the scenes, Miss Carey, they're all very sweet and very nice people. And, uh I feel like I have a good relationship with these people, and that's always good for business, you know? Absolutely. I also know that, that when yeah. we first talked, right before your first fight, you had a pretty clear path to what you wanted to do. You wanted to fight your fights, and then you wanted to move towards a title fight. You figured it within two years, I believe, is what you said to me. Are you still on path that, or do you think it could, be, it could happen more rapidly given your performances? Because the middleweight division is yeah, kind of wide I'm open. I'm, I'm enjoying it right now. I'd like to see what they give me next. I, I would assume that my next fight is going to be a prelim fight. And, uh, I mean, I wish for the best. If I can get on Spike TV this next fight, that'd be great. But uh, if they want to give me a prelim fight, I would love to get in there and uh, off a full camp, make that 185 pounds because uh, I had that little mishap. I missed by one pound my first fight at 185 in Bellator. Yeah. Um, I feel I waited. I, I, I let my body be dehydrated too many nights in a row before the final cut. Uh and that was a mistake on my part, but I got it right. I made 195 without a problem. I'd like this next fight with a full camp at 185. And then that last, last fight of the contract, give me give me Chris Honeycutt on Spike TV. <laughs> nice, you're looking at I've already said something to Chris Honeycutt, and he, he tweeted back at me, and he acts like he wants it. But I mean, this is a 5'10", oversized welterweight. And if he fought me, he would be shooting for his life, and he knows that. <laughs> you know what I mean? He talks tough on Twitter, and I'm looking at this guy like, my man, you are a wrestler. You're gonna try to hump my legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do you feel? How do you see a fight going with Chris Honeycutt? I mean, that's another undefeated. Honestly, he's looking to snatch another. Oh, huh? I see how you're operating out here, man. <laughs> yeah, he he actually has a loss. He was knocked out by uh, by Paul Bradley. Oh, um, oh you're but, right. But you're right. That's right. Say it again. He said, "Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I completely forgot about that. But yeah, you're right." Yeah, yeah, he took that. So he's 9-1, and one, but he's sitting pretty high up in that middleweight division somehow. He yeah. pulled out of the fight with Kendall Grove. Yes. You know, so when I said something to him, he was quick to say, oh, you know, well, I've never missed weight. And I said, guess what? I've never pulled out of a fight, little homie. <laughs> okay. Stay, stay healthy. You left the promotion hanging. But if me and him were to fight, I see him, I see him coming out. The shot's already on his mind. He wants to close the distance, but he can't figure out how to do it. 
and I'm touching them from everywhere, not just with hands. People think, oh, you know, Jordan Young's a boxer. I just like using my hands, but these kicks, these kicks are coming, and there's something special, you know. I see me touching them from long range, and I see him either meeting his end within the first two rounds to those strikes, or I see him coming in for that takedown, and I don't see that going well for him either. You know, this isn't a this isn't a wrestling match by any means. So do you, do you think you sub him or you knock him out? Because I know your sub game is strong, man. I remember when you first came out against Chris Harris, everyone was like, oh, this guy's submission fighters, and you let, you pieced him up with the hands, showing, like, real diversity. But your grappling game is solid. You wrapped up that dar stroke real quick the other night. Yeah, man, that's, that's, hitting, that's, hitting, that's hitting under wraps for me. People look at me and they say he's, he's, he's tall and he's long. You know what I mean? We want to, you know, they think they're going to Mike Tyson their way in and hit me with punches, but... Once they once they feel that that reaction time and that speed and, and they get touched by that long stiff jab, it seems like they all want to shoot. And uh, I mean, I started in the gi. I started in gi jiu jitsu. I was a martial artist before I was a fighter, so it, it, it plays in. I'm comfortable everywhere, you know. You know, you're in a good you're in a good division right now with Bellator. The middleweight division seems like it's kind of wide open. Everything seems to be for the taking almost. How, how, do you, are you eyeing Rafael Carvalho for how long? Is it still a two-year plan for you, or like when do you yeah, when do you want to get at him? Can keep it honestly. Um, I don't know who they're going to make him fight next. He just had an impressive knockout against uh, Manhoff, and that was yeah. good. Um, but let's say they make him fight John Salter next. John Salter's on a tear. I see he just submitted a couple uh, high-level black belts in uh, the AC, ABCC trials, mm -hmm. and. Um, I don't know. We'll see if he even has the belt. I'm worried about these next two fights. I don't think I'm fighting for the title in the next two fights. Sure. So um, if he can keep it, then that would be impressive, and uh, I would love to take it from him. Hey. You know what? I mean, I, I after watching their last two performances, man, I feel like that's, uh, that's a, it's inevitable that you will get to that point. You're, you're just too crisp in all areas. Um, it's been I, really impressive to watch you, watch you operate, man. I appreciate it, my man. Absolutely. Somebody better tell him. Somebody better tell him I'm on the scene. I think he's a little tentative in his fights. Uh, I think he's a well-rounded fighter, just like me. But he's a little tentative, and uh, you know, it seems like uh, he's not. Uh, he got to finish his last fight, but it doesn't seem as, uh, as if he's out there looking for the finish. It seems as if he's looking to stay safe and and uh, do as much damage as he can without taking damage, which is a smart style to have. But I mean. As that champion, you got to be finishing fights. You have to show you're the best in the world. True story, man. So, what what, what do people catch you doing outside the outside the cage? You know, when you're not fighting, what's uh what's Jordan Young out there doing, man? What kind of stuff are you up to? Man, honestly, uh, I love I love uh, I love listening to music. I love a lot of music, and uh, I'm also um, I'm also uh, outside of music. I like girls. Honestly, I spend a lot of time with girls. I don't I don't drink. I'm not much of a partier. I like Miami though. I like to go to Miami. When I go to Miami, you know, a lot of people are losing money and they're uh, they're they're drinking, partying. The only thing I'm losing is sleep, and uh, you know, so I like it. I just it. like to I like to be around good people, good energy, good music, and uh, good food. So when you say you like girls, that do you like a girl or you like girls? <laughs> See, actually, I have a girlfriend right now, so I don't want to get in trouble. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that. I, I have a girl that I'm enjoying my company with. She's great, and uh, you know, she has her own career as well. And we're we're both two young, successful people right now. But um, I mean, before her, uh, yeah, I would like <laughs> to okay. be was... around girls. You know, who wants to be around guys all the time? <laughs> Amen, man. That, you know what? That's why I, I myself ended up. I just stopped playing a lot of competitive sports because, like, Friday night, I'm around 20 guys doesn't really make sense to me i wasn't really feeling that i was like i'm not going to be pro so i don't see why i'm sitting here for <laughs> you know so i can definitely my respect man. that man so uh what, so my, you like to go to miami what like south beach yeah yeah i like south beach for sure even uh even like downtown miami you know Sweet. what i mean i get through these fights uh i like to be smart with my money but you know if you uh if you have it and it's there i like to you know it's fun to go get a get a nice hotel room down there in miami on the 13th floor somewhere you know got a nice little pool on the floor right outside your, your room and a uh, nice view amen and, you know, to that. take a girl go go on a sushi date go go shoot some guns do something fun enjoy the weekend and then it's right back to the grind you know what i mean on monday absolutely you know what man i i just like to hear the fact that there's a you know a 22 year old young man in the game 
who's getting the, the kind of money where he could go out and buy himself a Lexus and enjoy his time in Miami because the way the game is and you know you're hearing all these people talking about money for fighters and, and things like that it's nice to hear that you know you, you're out there at least you're getting taken care and taken care of to the point where you could do that you know so it's a, that's nice to hear yeah man, man I'm, I'm thankful for it and I, I tell you what I can't lie I can't lie to you I'm a real person I don't like to sit here and act like you know everything's all, all roses no. before this fight i was in the mud man I, I got through that fight in january and that that set me right a little bit but you know then after that that money ran out and uh you know there was a little bit there where i, I was i didn't have any money to my name and uh my car broke down and i'd be stuck up in the dorms i stay in the dorms with uh, american top team they take care of me uh great facilities up there it keeps you focused but uh there'd be times where i would feel stuck a little bit so it's a blessing for me to get through this fight and after this fight um i don't want to say that i picked up a lot of attention because i've always had a lot of support from hometown sponsors Mm -hmm. but it was like a re-emergence you know what i mean absolutely um businesses started showing interest and new people started reaching out and uh it's just a great time right now for me Hey man, you know what? You you really did. Like I've even had people that uh, that I know who are just starting to get into Bellator because, like I said, you know, with the uh, acquisition of a lot of these uh, ex UFC fighters or people just making the jump because they're 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 happier with Bellator. And, and I had told them after your first fight, I was like, man, the kid's good. I said he, he the kid's real good. He's real smooth. And then now I got people saying to me like, man, did you see Jordan Young? You see that he wrapped up that Darce choke like he looked real good. So you're starting to catch the attention of people, man. Like just even even your casual fan, you know, people are realizing that you're a real young guy with a lot of talent. So I think a lot of people are starting to see that you're going to make a splash. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Hello. Hey, hey, uh, hey, brother. Hey, hey brother. Bro. I'm uh, I'm I'm appreciating the interview. I'm in the tattoo shop right now. My my guy, uh, Buddha, he's going to get to work on me here at uh, Ironheart Tattoo in Des Moines, Iowa. Sweet. Um, you could throw that in there for me. This is one of my top sponsors and uh, just an overall good guy. It's already in um, there, man. My man. So. Uh, All right. I'll let yeah, you go, I man. This, go- this phone. What's up? I said, I, I said, yeah, we'll let you go. We'll let you get to your tattoo, man. I've seen the ink on your arm, too. It's looking right. <laughs> my man, we're working. We're on to the right arm now. All but, right. Uh, let's let's reach out. And, uh, I'll shoot you a message, and uh, we can follow up, brother. Sounds good, man. Enjoy the night. Take care, bro. All right, you as well. Later. All right, man. Take care. It's Jordan Young, man. I like that guy. Good guy. Really real. Nice dude. What'd you think? So interesting. What he uh, said. Uh, what we were talking about before on the podcast, where I was telling you when Chael said that when he came to Bellator, he noticed it was more of a family atmosphere. Yeah. And also, the, he, I mean, he just confirmed with us that the sponsorship again. You know what I mean? He first fight, he made a, he didn't have enough money to keep him afloat, and now that he's like you said, turning some heads, he's getting some sponsorship, and now things are turning around for him. That's Definitely. the way. That's that's the free market. That's the way it should work. You shouldn't be able. You shouldn't be a slave to, to Reebok or Nike or whoever it is. You know. No, absolutely. You know what, man? Uh, like I said, I I am happy to see a kid like that, a young kid, and and he's he's doing his thing. You yeah. know what I mean? The kid's making it happen. So. You got to have a lot of respect for that, man. That's uh, he's he's doing great, and the kid is tough as nails. Yeah, man. He is tough. Like his last two opponents, both of them were undefeated. Well, he wa- he waited and waited and waited, and he got that he finally caught him with that overhand right, and then he just wrapped it up with a submission. That's the way you're supposed yeah. to do it. The patience is just crazy for a kid 22 years old with like seven professional fights. Like just how relaxed he is in the cage. He puts you in like a. I think he puts maybe puts you in a little bit of like a, a, a train. Yeah, a lull because he, he just he's just stalking you down slowly and slow. Like he said, he was backing up against the fence. He had to throw leg kicks, which is actually a pretty good game plan. But eventually, the thing got caught. So. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like he never panicked. Like he showed, uh, he, he showed, like he showed patience well beyond like his time mm-hmm. in the cage. You know yeah, I was mean? surprised when you said he was twenty two. I didn't see his age. Yeah, man. Yeah, everyone on the show is twenty two tonight, mm-hmm. man. We got Jerome. Uh, he's coming up next. He's another one twenty two stud. Like all the all these kids, man. This is the future of MMA, and uh, that's why I'm really happy to have them on the show. I'm happy to talk to these guys. You know. You see, at 22 years old, what you're doing with your money, mm-hmm. bud? Cruising through Miami, getting yeah, yeah. tattoos, full sleeves and stuff. You can go on vacation, all inclusive. Hey, if, you know, whatever. It's only, as long as you're not drinking too much, doing too part, too much hey, partying. You locked yourself in a cage, man. You deserve to. Uh, you deserve to treat yourself to a little something. You Absolutely. Know? Anyway, we're going to be right back. We're going to have Jerome Rivera on the line. So uh, everyone, stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Good kid. It'll be a good conversation. See you in a few. Beautiful job gaining position whoever's working with with Rivera on his position grappling is doing an exceptional job because he moved around Riley's body in the second and third round beautifully what's up everybody welcome back we're back we have Jerome Rivera on the line fresh off a 
a, a dominant victory at uh, LFA 10. What's going on, Jerome? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing real good. Well, first things in order, man. Happy belated birthday, buddy. I know you turned 22 on Saturday, right? Yeah, turned 22. Thank you. Appreciate it. What'd you get up to for your birthday, man? What's a 22-year-old doing these days out in New Mexico for your birthday? <laughs> uh, I That uh, day before my birthday was kind of enough of a birthday for me. I was pretty worn out. Yeah, on yeah. the actual day of, I ended up, uh, I wanted to go do like a hike or something cool out there, but my body is pretty burnt out. I went to the hot springs down in Manitou Springs. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so it was a pretty relaxing day, kind of just hung out and chilled. You had a, you had a really good performance against Zach Riley, man. Uh, how did you feel about your performance overall? Um, I felt good. I uh, felt like I went there and, um, was able to overcome a little bit of adversity there in the beginning, which was good. Uh, I wanted to strike a little bit more with him, but I'm pretty happy with my performance. Yeah, I remember you you, you were telling me before the fight you wanted to show off your hands a little bit. Um, how how important was it for you to get through that first round, a first round like that, especially you know show uh, on your debut with LFA on the big stage like that? How important was it for you to get through that round? Um, it was big for me. I wanted to see how it felt. I mean, I. Um, I, like I said before, it's just another cage getting in there is no difference. But I just wanted to make sure that my body kept up with what my mind is thinking. And um, my cardio felt good. I don't feel like I got any kind of jitters or anything. Um, Zach was just a really strong guy and snatched me up pretty fast and put me in a bad position. But, um, yeah, getting through that first round, being able to kind of calm myself down and overcome that was good for my mental. So I feel like after I got out of that bad position, that kind of woke me up and was like, all right can't make any more mistakes like that it's time to really take it to this guy and uh, perform to my ability and uh and 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 did you ever i mean you came out in round two and three and absolutely dominated every facet of the fight you were heavy on top which which i'm not gonna say it was surprising but you were you actually had moved up a weight class from flyweight you is where you were competing before so how comfortable did you feel at bantamweight um, one thing that was awesome was I didn't have to do like any kind of a water weight cut. I right. was able to just straight diet the weight down. Um, so like when I was in there, I didn't have any worries about like gassing myself out or anything. My legs felt like they were under me the whole time. So that was good. Um, I was, but the thing was, is the day of the fight, I was only weighing about 137 and, uh, Zach was about a good 150 in there. So I did kind of feel that in the beginning when we first started off. I threw a couple of push kicks at him, and it felt like I was kicking a wall. <laughs> so really solid. And then when he grabbed me, he was like, "I could feel that that strength for sure." Did you so, feel? Uh, did you feel him wilt a bit as, as when you got in there in the second round, and you were able to put yourself in a dominant position? Did Did you feel him wilt, start to wilt from like the weight cut or or whatever? You, I mean, you can't speak to that, but did you feel him wilt, wilt in any way? Yeah, I felt like he kind of just was defending after a while. Like, he wasn't really trying to put up a whole lot of offense from his back. He was more kind of just reacting to me. And that's kind of what I wanted to get him doing. I wanted to push a pace where he was always reacting to me. But, yeah, I definitely feel like he got himself a little tired trying to squeeze onto that choke in the first round. And yeah. uh, I think with just enough pressure, he slowly started gassing out. Do you think it was like a, a frustration thing for him too? Because, I mean, you defended it perfectly. It was two-on-one. Uh, hand, like two hands on one uh, the whole way through every time he attempted to choke you peeled it off you pushed your way out of it do you think that kind of like stole his will a little bit when he just wasn't able to finish you from a dominant position like that yeah I think that's always a little hard when you kind of give someone all you got especially in a position like that I think he really felt like he had it on there and a couple times there was he did have it pretty tight but um, yeah I think when mentally when you go all in on something like that and you don't get it it's a little, it's a little tough and then uh, also, I feel like when we had started off striking, I wasn't. We weren't able to strike a whole lot. Maybe we struck for about a minute. But I think he kind of got got an idea that I was going to be a little troublesome with the range, a little bit longer than him. So I think that kind of when he realized that the striking was going to be hard and he couldn't catch me in that submission, I think that's when he kind of started uh, going into my game. Yeah, and you were. Did you use uh, range effectively? Did you use it as well as you would have liked? Because I know that was a big part of what you wanted to do. Um, yeah, I feel like I went a little kick crazy. I feel like I threw a little bit too much kick. But at the same time, when I was uh, kind of like thinking in my head what I was going to do before the fight, 
Um, that was one thing I wanted to do was throw a lot of kicks at him because I know um, against his style specifically, if I could get a lot of kicks off and not really let him plan, I knew that would kind of take away his spin kick from him, which he throws off in. Yes. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of that was kind of purposeful to throw a lot of kicks like that, but when I watched myself over again, I wish I would have set it up a little bit better with my hands, but um, I feel like I was able to keep a good range on him with my movement and my kicks, though. Um, so, like you know, you, a dominant a, a dominant performance like that at bantamweight is is staying there an option for you? Like knowing how easily the weight cut was, how how you were able to dominate him on the ground like that is does that make you comfortable to stay at that weight? <clears throat> um, I think one thirty five is something my body's gonna grow into. Like maybe when I can't make one twenty five anymore is when I'll start really going to one thirty five. Or if I get like short notice fights here in the meantime, if I'm a little heavy. I don't mind going 135, but I think I want to make a run at 125 again because uh, uh, walking around like 137, 135 is super light compared to when I used to fight at flyweight before. I was walking around like 145 to 150. Oh, wow. So I think now, uh, yes, yeah, so I think now walking around like 130 because I still haven't even cracked 140 yet since the fight. So I think really just eating clean, walking around like 135. Once I hit like a good workout, maybe get to 130, and then lose about five pounds water weight, I think it'd be a pretty easy cut. So in the past too, like I've been able to just straight diet down to 125 without using the sauna or anything. So I think it, I can get back down to that. Is 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 eating clean and stuff something you've just kind of now adopted into into your your training, or is that is it something that you just felt would be the next step to get you to that next level? Um. Eating clean, I feel like I never really worked with, like, a nutrition coach in the past, and I never was, like, very knowledgeable myself. I would mm -hmm. tend to just wing it, and uh, I don't think, like, sometimes I wouldn't eat a whole lot, or um, I, w I wouldn't have, like, good timing with my meals, but now I was working with, uh, with a nutrition coach over at the UFC gym, and he kind of helped me out with the meal plan, and I feel like the timing of my meals is really good. Um, I think, like, my macronutrients has balanced out really well. And then just watching what I was eating, um, all that definitely played um, played a, a big deal into my weight cut, and it was a super easy cut getting to 135. Sure. Um, are you looking for for a quick turnaround? Because I know you you had taken a little while off, and then you had two kind of roughly back to back. If I'm if I'm right, um, are you looking to get back in there quickly again, or, or do you want to take a bit of time off? What's your plan? Um, you know, I kind of want to ride the momentum wave. I'm I feel like really eager to get back into camp and really eager to start training again so um i would like more time to, just to crisp everything up watching that video i see i want to work on my hands a lot more and i just really want to just keep um slowly just sharpening everything up my jiu-jitsu i want to get a little more crafty um wrestling I want to keep working on that so i mean if i could get about three months uh about a three-month training camp i think that would be great but also um, speaking with LFA, if they want to get a quick turnaround, like something like end of June, that's not something I'd be opposed to because I feel like I'm in good shape and I'm I'm just gonna fall right back into another training camp. So sweet. Um, do you have anybody in mind who you, who you'd like to fight? You can look at the 125 division. Um, yeah, when I was uh, um, after the fight, after my fight the other day, I was looking. Pat Miletic had a top five flyweight prospect list. Had uh, Roberto Sanchez on there, Nick Urso, uh CJ Hamilton. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at the list, and I feel like I can beat all those guys. Um, ideally, I wouldn't want to fight someone like Nick Urso because he trains out here in Albuquerque. Um, he's a cool guy. I chatted it up with him. Um, and I tr cross trained a little bit at Jackson's. I go spar there sometimes. So if I could keep from fighting Nick, that would be cool. Um, but then at the end of the day, it is business. But um, I, I would like to fight Roberto Sanchez or CJ Hamilton. I think either of those guys I match up well with. Um, and if I have one specifically to aim for and strive for, I think I can come up with a really good game plan and um, come up with a way to beat those guys. Sweet. Any Either one of them you would prefer over the other, or stylistically speaking? I feel like you and Roberto um, Sanchez Roberto would be a crazy Sanchez fight. listed at number one. Yeah. So I would I would like to fight Roberto Sanchez. He looks like a tough grappler. Was, um, striking, I would like to see where he's striking at. I think um, grappling, I think I'd be able to defend his takedowns and 
I think it turned out to be a really good matchup for me. So uh, I like that Roberto fight. Yes, stylistically, that would be a crazy fight. Like the two of you are grappling, it's just so dominant. I would love to watch three rounds or less yeah, that, of that. Yeah, that would be some good scrambles and some good striking exchanges. Yeah, have you, have you mentioned that to LFA? Because I know he's been a little reluctant to take some fights. I don't know, CJ Hamilton had called him out. He wasn't interested in that because I think he's like knocking on the door of the UFC or something like that at the at the moment. Um, have you talked to LFA at all? Have you mentioned that to them? Um, no, we haven't mentioned that one to them yet. They're kind of asking me uh, what I want to do going forward, 125 or 135. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to let them know 125 is what we want going forward and uh, I definitely want a top contender, and if they think their top guy is Roberto Sanchez, and that's the guy I'm going to be asking for. You, um, you said before when we were talking that you wanted to sign a long-term deal with the LFA. Is that something you spoke to them about, or, or are you working towards some sort of a contract with them? Um, we, um, I have a coach and a manager that are kind of dealing with that with them for me okay um right now i had caught in a couple bumps and bruises on my ankles after that fight so uh, mainly just get making sure everything was good there but i went to the doctor and got x-rays and everything and uh just a good bump on my ankle nothing serious so okay now that we got that figured out i'm um, gonna try and hopefully work out some kind of contract with those guys nice nice yeah because you, you were saying you wanted to spend a little bit of time like seasoning your skills um, before you make the jump up to like either a UFC or a Bellator or anything like that, um, is that still part of the plan after getting in there? And like, or does it change when you have a dominant performance like that, or do you feel like, huh, maybe I'll be ready to make that jump like a little sooner than later? Like, what's your feeling like after uh, a fight like still, that? Yeah, I would still like to get some experience with those guys because even though I felt good, I watched myself and I still see a lot of improvements I can make, especially before I start getting in there with the UFC flyweights. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I would like to get some experience in those five-round fights. I want to fight one of these top contenders, and then hopefully I can get matched up for a belt with LFA and get some experience in those championship rounds. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, w I want to shoot for that belt and try and get the belt with LFA, maybe defend it one time, defend it a couple of times, just get some experience in there, especially in those five-round fights because you see guys like Demetrius Johnson, how fast they are. <laughs> Um, if I got put on the stage like that, I just want to make sure I'm ready. So, yeah, I would, I would definitely still like to stay at LFA for at least three fights. Well, you know, you're, you're in a K, you're in a position where you got um, nothing but time, right? I mean, you're, you just turned 22 the other day, so you have a ton of time. Yeah. Maybe you, you got probably at least what three or four years before you start to hit hit your stride and like really be in your prime. So, you know, time you you, you can be patient. <laughs> Um, yeah, definitely. That's why I mean, I would like to take a fast turnaround if LFA offers it to me. But in all reality, it'll probably be good if I could take about three to four months to really just, like I said, I just want to keep working on the basics like I've been doing. Like I feel um, like, uh, I don't know, I just feel like a sponge in there again when I'm training. I feel like I'm taking everything in. So I want to start taking a couple trips out here now on the weekend, start going out to Syndicate MMA and, <clears throat> and try and go visit being Muay Thai if I can and just go get a lot of different views and take in as much knowledge as I can get ready for the next fight. Um, and you said you were injury-free when you came out of this one because I know you were battling a couple injuries before. You were saying knee injuries or whatnot, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so you came out clean. Everything's good. No issues? Yeah, Besides, like, the bumps you were talking just, about? Uh, yeah, we just kind of uh, clashed shins a lot, and I think I, my ankle hit his shin a few times and like one of the first kicks of the fight I kicked him right in his elbow so oh. got a little knot on my left ankle but it was nothing too serious cool and then uh, knees and everything are good training camp went great I didn't have no underlying injuries going into that so if you're able to stick around with LFA for a little bit are you would you be in a position to I2 titles maybe like even the Bantamweight title that would be awesome I mean, I don't see any issue really fighting at 135. Like, I feel like Zach's a pretty tough, pretty strong guy at that sure. weight. And uh, so far, I've done good at 135. So if I were to stay in with LFA for the long term, maybe in there a few more fights, that would be really interesting. I would like to uh, fight at that division. Because I look at the 135-pound Bantam weights also, and there's some tough guys there. But um, I, see, I don't feel like there's anyone that I couldn't be if I had a person to work for and game plan with, I feel like I could come up with something. 
Hey, man. I, I'm, all, I'm all for the big goals, man. I, I like people that set lofty goals and chase them. So that's uh, that's real good, man. And uh, you couldn't have asked for a better performance the other night to get their attention, that's for sure. And uh, I really want to thank you for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I know uh, I know it's not always easy to make the time. So thank you for making time for us here at the Fight House, Jerome. It's a real pleasure to have you on the show, buddy. Uh, nice. It's a pleasure having me. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate you guys having me on the show again. No problem, buddy. And uh, hopefully we can uh, talk again before your next fight. Yeah, most definitely. We'll stay in touch. All right, buddy. Have a good one, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right. All you right. as well. Thank you. All right. Bye. Well, that was Jerome Rivera. You know, I, I like the guy. So soft-spoken, man. Yeah. But an absolute <laughs> killer. He, he, was, he, he crawled all over Zach Riley for the last 10 minutes of that fight. It was just bananas. He was for, To think he was like a 125-er coming up to Bantamweight, and Zach Riley was like, he's a huge Bantamweight. Yeah. And he just dominated him in every, like, his corner was yelling out, like, come on, Zach, like, you got to do something. Like, he was super dominant. And when you're learning, when you're that young and you're learning, it's so important, like you said earlier in the interview, to face that adversity. Absolutely. Because a lot of fighters go through, and if you have knockout power, you can cruise through four or five guys and get into a fight that you're not ready for. And some guy with a, you know, with a George St. Pierre type game plan comes in, he just ruins your night because you're just not ready for it. You know, you got to make sure that you can get off your feet, mm -hmm. reverse, sweep, all those things. Well, yeah, a huge part of it too for this kid, like um, leading up to before his last, not this fight, the one before, he was like fighting injuries and stuff. And he said, he goes, I was going to the gym and I was playing everything safe. I wasn't really learning what I was supposed to be learning because I just didn't want to get hurt. So I was like half stepping everything essentially. Mm -hmm. And he's like, now I can like go in there and learn what I'm supposed to be learning. And, and like I always say with the with these young guys, the growth between fights is ridiculous. You yeah. know what I mean? Like what, what you see the growth between like six, even in six months when they're like 22, 23, whatever is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's just it's like wow, you know. Like, I didn't realize someone could improve like that. Yeah, you could be training for the like the, if your your opponent could be definitely be training for the wrong person because six months later you're a different fighter. Yeah, you're just different a completely discipline. different person. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah, good kid, man. I look forward to watching more of his fights. There's definitely definitely a bright future for that guy. Sure. Um, undefeated, still undefeated, and patient too. He's he's looking to take his time. Yeah, I, w I was super impressed with the fact that there was zero panic. When Zach Riley had his back for almost the entire round, like like maybe just three minutes or so, yeah, and he didn't panic once. Every time that they would, the choke would be close, he would peel his arm off. He'd go through the proper defensive steps, and he would he would get himself out of trouble like every single. And that's time. a common scenario in the high at the highest level too. Absolutely, you're gonna end up in those places, right? Mm -hmm. And he didn't. There was no panic, man. Like he just. For sure. It's like another day at the office. It's a pleasure to have him on the show. I really enjoy talking to him. Um, we're gonna be back next with. AJ McKee. Look forward to that one. And uh, everyone stay tuned. It's going to be a good conversation. Talk to you soon. That's called the Miko Crow Cop Kick. My dad, my dad taught me that one. So shout out, Miko. Thanks. Congratulations, man. Can't wait to see you in the cage again. AJ McKee, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Fight House. We're here. We're joined with AJ McKee coming off a devastating victory at uh, Bellator 178. What's going on, AJ? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Big fight you had uh, uh, on Friday. Big performance, man. Uh, how, how happy were you with it? Um, I was excited, you know, just to be able to uh, get back to what I know I was capable of and uh, just getting tears and locking back down. True, man. You know, that, that that's one thing I was going to ask you. I guess we can get to that now. How good was it to finally get it, you know, not finally, but to get back on, on the finishing path where you're finishing fighters, you had a couple decisions in a row. Um, how did it feel to get back on that track? Um, it was good, you know. I was just getting bored. Um, just training every day, every night, and uh, just training month after month, you know, and, and going in there to finish somebody in the first minute of a fight. It's like, okay, you train two, three months as hard as I do, and, and yeah, the outcome is great. You know, you knock somebody out, but it's like, man, okay, I'm not trying to wait another three months until I fight again. But um, it, it, it's just part of the growing, learning the sport, and uh, and putting the tools that you have together, you know, and really utilizing them. So I'm, I'm on the grind now, and I'm just ready. I'm ready to get back in there next week, you know. Absolutely, man. I know you told me there's no days off for you. We sp we spoke before, like a while back, and, and you were saying that you're you're in the gym daily. There's there's no real days off for you. So I imagine uh, you're looking to get back in there right away. Um, 
how smooth was the head, the, the head kick was the technique? Like, was that how you visioned this fight going? I know before the fight you, you said there was going to um, be a knockout. Uh, I knew this was going to be a knockout. I knew, like, I knew I was going to knock him out. Like, that was, that was the thing. I was, I was leaving it all in there to knock him out, you know. Neither he's getting dropped or I'm getting dropped. But I'm going to be swinging for my life. So that was the plan. But um, the head kick, it was just kind of, I didn't expect the head kick. I kind of was switching stands back and forth. And when I go orthodox, I usually rip my right leg. And he had, uh, he had, his corner, I heard his corner say, he's, he's going to kick, he's going to kick. But honestly, it was him throwing kicks that got me into kicking mode. So when I switched stands to orthodox, I was going to fire the kick. His, his corner called it out. And then I switched back, and then I, I kind of measured my range, noticed he wasn't in, in punching range. So I, uh, I fired a kick, and, and just my whole intentions were to get the kick there, you know. Right. So I got the kick there, and – when it hit him, like that's when my adrenaline rush just started going because I was really calm the entire fight. Yeah, and you were. It just you started looked. pumping me up, and that's that's when I went in with that little hammer fist. Yeah, were you surprised that he dropped with the kick? I mean, he got his hand up. He did, I guess, what he was supposed to do, but your foot kind of wrapped right around it and caught him. Were you surprised at all that that it dropped him the way it did? Yeah, because I I didn't throw the kick as hard as I could. Like I, I literally just kind of I I just threw it to get it there. Yeah. Um, so it, it was just surprising, and then I was like, "Oh, I dropped him!" You know, when I when I figured out I dropped him, I was just like, "Get him!" You know, like just the instant adrenaline just put me back in that that fight or kill mode. Mm-hmm. You know, this is when I first saw this fight. I was like, "This is a pretty dangerous fight because Mazad is a tough guy." I mean, he was eleven and one. His only loss came against Cody Garbrandt, um, but his name wasn't very big. Um, did you get that same yeah. feeling that like this, this was, I mean, not that you don't, obviously you're going in there with every intention of winning and, and extremely confident, but did you feel like it was a more dangerous fight for you? Um, it was, I felt it was a good test for me to get back on track and to see where I'm at. But, um, I don't know. I, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm ready for top five. I'm ready for that belt, you know? So that, that's just every, every fight, you know, that that's where my mindset is. Uh, all I see is that gold, so uh, that, that's where my mindset is. If it's if it's not one of those, then I'm not really worried about it. True, um, you know one thing is um, like you in the early parts of your career. You know your first four or five fights, you're steamrolling everybody, and and the the hype train was, it was really building for you, and it was getting a lot of momentum. Do you feel that people started to question like how good you really were because of the couple decision wins, or like how dominant a force you you could be? Did you feel that? Um, I just feel it, it showed that people couldn't gauge me, you know, they, they don't know how good I am yet. And, um, my last couple of fights being boring, um, it shows even, even when I'm bored, you know, having the worst time in my life and, and just doing it just because it's what I do, you know, it shows that I can, I can still pull out wins and, and that's literally at the lowest point I feel I can, I can be, but, um, once, once I I continue and, and stay on track the way I am right now, man, sky sky is the limit. So, the, it, it's going to be very dangerous for a lot of people, you know, especially with me locking down the way I am right now. Yeah, I man, you're definitely you're looking uh, you're looking like you're really really stepping into your own and uh, making that next leap, like to get into that next level. Um, one of the things that I I've, I thought was kind of weird is um, with it, with Gallagher coming onto the scene, he's and they put him right on the 180 card. Do you feel like they kind of got behind him more as a prospect to, like, give him a push? Like, did you get that feeling? I mean, they gave him um, Machida's brother. Uh, oh, my God. You know he's fighting. He's fighting Machida. Um, do you feel like he kind of yeah. kind of got behind him and gave him a bit more of a push? Um, Giving him more of a push? Yeah, like, like I mean, like I'm saying, like, when he came in, they've kind of – he's had two fights. They put a, He hasn't fought anybody, really. They put him on the 180 card. They kind of put gave him Machida. Like, it seems like they're kind of trying to give him this real push. Did you get that sense? Like, like hey, man, like, I deserve – like, I should be on the 180 card. I should be getting this push? Um, judging off of my last couple of fights, um, no, I, I don't feel like I deserve that fight. Why? Because – my last fight with Brandon Phillips, I should have finished Brandon Phillips. The fight with Ray Wood was still an entertaining fight, yeah. but it it wasn't the fight that I, I wanted it to be, you know? I was My timing was off on my feet. He was a second ahead of me on everything, and, and that was just from, from certain things in my lifestyle that I had to change. But 
um, especially with that last fight, you know, coming off uh, with Brandon Phillips. Yes. If I, I literally just danced around that fight. I, did, I, I was in there, and I felt like I was sparring. I didn't even feel like I was fighting, you know. I kept them at bay. Um, I hit him with the left hand in the first, and I felt my thumb do a little wibble wobble, so I, I didn't even want to throw my left hand. So I was just keeping him at bay with my jab and my hook, and, and really didn't have to do anything. So what's changed? You know, you, you've talked about like now a couple times you've mentioned that you were kind of in this lull where you were just kind of going through the motions and doing what you do. And then obviously you come uh, out. Being hung- Sorry, go ahead. I would, say, I would say just being hungry again, you know, just being hungry and, and, and really, really wanting to get to that next level. No, that's what, not it. What triggered it for you? Like what triggered that hunger? Um... I don't know. I would say just kind of seeing, seeing uh, the future, you know, looking, looking what's ahead. You know, I, I feel like within the next three, four fights, I could be a world champion. Absolutely, I agree. On my birthday, I can be on my birthday. I can be a world champion and be the youngest world champion, and be undefeated, and have the longest win streak in Bellator history. So there, there's just many, many records that are up and up and going, and on top of it. Uh, being the first father-son to fight with my dad as well, you know. So there's there's just many, many records that are up in the air right now for us to, to for us to break and to just be able to, to get after. You know, that's a couple times. Uh, during our first conversation uh, we had maybe a few months ago, you had said about fighting with your father on the same card. Is that, that – this is now you've mentioned it again. Is this a real possibility that this is going to happen, that you and your pops are going to fight on the same card? Of course, man. My dad still trains with me every day. He's he was my he was my partner for this camp to help me get my weight down and and to just really to really uh, get things through this this fight, you know. So that it's 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 not a possibility. It's gonna happen, you know. It's just a matter of of supply and demand, you know. Bellator, it, it it's a business, you know. Sure. The people make Bellator happy. Bellator makes the fighters happy. The fighters make the people happy. So it's it's a it's a circling supply and demand. But um, I can I continue to make Bellator happy the way I did, and uh, I I can ask and request for things that other people can't. You know they sure. they'll, they'll they'll give me a little leeway. I feel you especially know. with that being the situation it is. You know that's something ESPN can pick up. That's something. A lot of organizations and, and sports centers and every every sport aspect can pick up, you know, being in such a, a tactical and hands-on sport, being able to compete father and son is, is kind of unheard of. Absolutely. It definitely is unheard of. Um, I think it's so cool, man, that that's even a possibility. Just, that, that, that'd be awesome. I, w- I would love to see that. Um, how important is your dad uh, in 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 your career? Like, I saw a picture. You know, I saw a really cool picture on your. Uh, I think it was your Instagram. I was looking through it the other day, uh, preparing for the interview. Of you flexing in front of your dad, and you were just a little guy, probably like no older than like seven, maybe. And then you had you had split screen with a with a hit. You guys as adults, obviously, as you as a man flexing in front of him, the exact same picture. I thought it was the coolest picture, man. Um, how important <laughs> is he to your career? Man, I, I I wouldn't be where I am today, honestly. I I don't know where I would be. I'd, if my dad was in MLF, I'd probably be in jail or gangbang or, or doing something. I I had no I no no nothing I needed to do. You know, I'd I'd be in some I, I'd be where I grew up. You know, in the street doing doing things you're not supposed to do. Fair. Hello. Oh, we lost AJ. Give us one second. We're going to call him right back. Hold on one second. We'll get AJ back on the line. A little disconnection there. It's a, it's a good conversation we're having with AJ so far. Hello? Hey, AJ. How you doing, man? Must, Good. Must so, look. yeah, just, just having a father in life is uh, is key, you know, especially in a, in a boy's life and turning into a man. You know, he, he need a, a child, a male child needs a father to show him how to be a man. So that's. That that's really who I, I got to give all the thanks and the glory to, besides the man upstairs. Absolutely, man. You know, it's a, I think it's a great story, man. I, it was probably one of the coolest pictures I've seen, man. When I saw that you guys redid the picture as adults, I was like, that's pretty cool. I really, I really like that. It was, it was really awesome. Um, yeah. You know, 
you you took a stab at, at Gallagher, which was expected. I, I gotta say, after like what, what he had to say after his last fight, I, I expected that you were gonna have something to say. Um, it's not normally your style to to be out, outspoken like that. You're kind of more like I'll, I'll show you what I got in, in the cage type of guy. What is it about him that that's got your attention? That's kind of brought that side out of you. Hey, call me a pussy on national television, bro. That's ass whooping worthy all the way. <laughs> Fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Like if, like where I grew up, if we were walking down the street and that, and he like walks up and calls me a pussy, I'm clapping him in his mouth like right then and there. You know, that's just that's just like the highest level of disrespect besides calling somebody a bitch. You know? Yeah. And it's like I'm not gonna sink to his level and and start calling and just doing all that crazy stuff you know i got little kids that follow me and and look up to me you know i got little kids that dm me hey can hey you're really like i, I want to be like you can can you send me this and i'm like no you don't want to be like me you want to be better than me you know yeah, yeah so i'm not i'm not gonna go play this this mr big badass dude trying to trying to be mr billy badass you know he's right. not a badass no. Everybody knows he's not badass, and everyone can't wait for him to get his ass whooped. So, you, like I told him, I said, dude, you're a dog barking up a tree while a lion's climbing it. I like that, so I like I, that I think analogy. He's, he's, yeah, so I think he's, he's starting to realize he fucked up, you know? Especially after I go out there and head kick this dude, he goes on his Instagram and he's talking about, uh, I don't want to fight AJ. He said, fuck AJ, I don't want to fight AJ. I want to fight Patricio after Chinzo. I'm like, what? Like, you're, so you're running scared for the mountains now? You call me out on national television, call me a pussy, and then and now you don't want to fight. Yeah. I, I feel like you're not letting them off the hook with this one, man. I feel like you're like, no, you're fighting me. One way or another, we're going uh, we're gonna to make this uh, happen. Dude, definitely. It, uh, I honestly, my dad's like, it doesn't even make sense for you to fight him anyways. It's a step back. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, it is a step back, but this is, this is on some principles. You know what I'm saying? This is this is on like some man some man to man or man to boy stuff. Like, yeah, you know, you, you, you need to get your ass up. <laughs> and you know, for the record, man, I I don't know if it, if it even matters the neighborhood you grew up in. If you call anybody a pussy to their to national television like that, I agree with you. you something's got to be done about that. You can't just allow that to happen. I understand completely. Um, you know, but I will say your dad kind of has a point. Like with the win the, the Saturday or Friday, sorry, you, you kind of cemented yourself as like, I'm no longer a prospect, but I'm a contender. Um, it seems like there's bigger fish to fry than Gallagher. Like, is there somebody else you would rather have? Like, or, you know, like a step forward? Who would be a step forward for you at this point? Pitbull. Pitbull. Pitbull's got that belt. That's all I care about. Strauss was the man. Strauss lost that, lost that belt. So I'm, I'm back on Pitbull now. How do you feel you match up with him? Um, stylistically wise, I feel it's a bad matchup for him, just because the reach, the uh, the height. Um, he's got a lot of distance to cover on the inside coming forward, and me knowing my range is going to be a big problem with him, especially the way I was watching the way he was fighting Strauss against uh, Southpaw. I don't think it's it's not a good it's not a good style to fight southpaws against especially longer bigger southpaws right um you know the kind of thing you're 22 man how much longer do you have at at 45 like what's your what, what's your how hard is it for you to make weight i mean it's probably pretty easy right now but is it going to be a problem for you coming going forward um it's, it's getting there you know it's definitely getting there i'm starting to get bigger yeah um i've, I've put on i used to walk around at about one when I first started I could the cut was from about 150 it was an easy cut yeah 157 and then now it's it's up to like 65 oh, okay. so I'm getting bigger I've been I've been putting on more more muscle more power and I'm starting to fill out but I still make the weight easy I, I eat the day before weigh-ins I have breakfast and then that's my last meal but um I don't know definitely before the end of this year that's why I want to I want to get that belt and uh beat john jones record you know he was 23 when when he got when he got his world title so i got a full year to, to knock that out the way okay and that's so that's obviously the goal after that do you have like plans on like two division like are, are you start are you eyeing other goals you know as you talk about like your weight getting up there or whatever do you start to look at like 155 as being an option and, and eyeballing that division uh, 
definitely, you know, we, we just got to take things one step at a time, sure. get there, get that done first. And then, yeah, of course, 55 is definitely going to be an option. I get that belt, stay undefeated, go up there and uh, take that 155 belt as well, you know. Absolutely. Or I can I can take some time off, enjoy enjoy my life, uh, and continue training and and live live a little fat family life for a little bit. True. And do some traveling. Yeah, traveling's always good. I know you're a fan of traveling, man. You were trying to get back on that Italy card so you could get out there. They, they were they were loving yeah. some AJ out there. I, I've been to Russia already. I've been to Dublin. I, I've I haven't been some places. Germany. Amsterdam, I'm, I'm I'm getting around. I'm supposed to go to Phil- the Philippines tomorrow, but I don't think I'm gonna go. I've been I've been doing too much, right. too much flying. I'm tired of getting on a plane right now. Fair enough, and that's a long flight, man. That's like a 17 hour flight. And I know, and I just got back. I I literally went from Russia, Russia to Budapest, and then from Budapest uh, to Connecticut, and then from Connecticut. Now I'm supposed to leave to. Uh, philippines tomorrow so i'm like right, i'm probably sit this long trip out yeah yeah definitely man I, I, I would not be doing well with a 17 hour flight especially after those all the flights you're talking about that'd be crazy um what do you want next what's what, like what's the plan here how, how quickly do you want to make your turnaround what are you looking for are you going to wait and see what happens with gallagher and uh chinzo what's the plan uh, hopefully i can um i would love to get on that london card Oh, okay. I can't get on that London card. I'd love to get on the New York card. I'm trying to fight as soon as possible, you know. Sure, yeah, you got to once you got the once you got that fire, that flare going, you gotta you gotta keep it burning. So, so who, I'm hot right now. Who would be a target at that point? I mean, that that's soon. You're talking London's in like a few weeks, and uh, well, yeah, end of June. I'll be out be there with uh, Baby Slice because Baby Slice is fighting there. So, I'll uh, I'll already be out there. And I'm, I'm, I'll be back in the gym tomorrow. I literally just touched down back home right now. And so, I'm, I'm going to be back in the gym tonight and then tomorrow morning's practice again. So who who at 45 that would be available? Like, is there anybody you have your eye on and be like, okay, you could maybe pitch this idea? Or, or is it kind of like a replacement type thing? Like, what would you be looking for? Um, a, a replacement or an opponent. It, it doesn't matter to me, you know. If the fight falls out, I'm willing to take the fight. 45 or 55. Ooh, I like it. You really do have that flair going, man. You're like, I'll take whoever. 55, 45, doesn't matter, eh? I like it. Big, if I'm if I'm cutting the 45s, I don't have to cut the, the 45s. I can stay at 155 and get stronger and bigger. Oh, somebody's in trouble. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair enough. I like it. Um, so listen, man. Outside of fighting, man, what can, what, what what do you do outside uh, outside the cage? What tell the people? And what's AJ up to when he's got some time away from fighting and training? Uh, paintballing, man. I love paintballing. I usually go every Friday, Saturday, or not Friday. I'll usually go every Saturday, Sunday. But uh, I haven't been in a while, so I'm I'm definitely gonna be up there tomorrow. Nice. Uh, Hollywood Hollywood paintball sports out in the uh, I think it's Downey or something. Okay. But uh, I like the paintball, and then I love cars. I got a '88 CRX with V18 in it, turbo, nice. and now I'm getting an Evo. So. Good days, eh? It's a good cars. time to be AJ. <laughs> good time to be yeah. AJ McKee. I got you, man. Cars, cars, guns, and paintball, and that's that's what I love, you know. Nice, man. Sounds good. Listen, I want to. Uh, I really want to thank you, man, for taking some time to talk to us. I know you're a super busy guy. You're taking flights all over the place, and uh, thanks for getting in touch with us and spending some time at the fight house, man. Oh, thanks for having, man. Absolutely, it's a blessing. Absolutely, man. And uh, hopefully, we know we can get in touch with you again before your next fight when something gets announced, and we could we could have you back on the show or something. Of course, just let me know. I'm always, I'm always down to tune in and uh, give you guys some predictions. Oh, I love it. All right, sounds good, man. We'll talk soon. All right, have a good one. You too, AJ. Have a good night. You know, that's a that's a that's a good AJ, man. I've talked to AJ a few times, and and you could, when he says like the fires lit, you can actually feel that. Like from like, remember we were talking before this, uh, yeah. like he was very like. You know, almost um, in a lot. Like, like yeah, he had the, like the, the, like a lack of emotion in some conversations and stuff, which I thought was just his personality. Like he was just a very relaxed guy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But then you get like this side of AJ. You start talking to him, and all of a sudden it's like, like no, no, no. Like I'm seems ready. Like, I'm ready he to seems rock. Like he's having fun. 
Yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. For somebody that was just saying how, you know, he was completely out. He just seemed like he didn't want to do it too much and wanted to stick a training, but it seems like he's fully back into it right now. It looked like, I mean, you can clearly tell. I mean, that knockout was ridiculous. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think that probably happens to a lot more people than we know. Like, mm -hmm. it just, like you said, you're training for months and months and months, and then you go in there and you dust some guy in under two minutes, and it's like, oh. It's like preparing for anything, you know. You, you do a podcast or whatever. You don't want to do the, 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 the prepare for an interview. You got to do all yeah. the all the research. The research isn't, isn't the fun part. It's the interview, but sure. you got to do all that work to make sure that the interview is good. It's the same thing for anybody. Some guys are just you, you meet people and they're just always do. They're always you know at a certain level, right? But luckily, but not everybody's like that. But I mean, it seems like AJ's found a good place for himself. Man, and I'm still holding on to seeing him fight Gallagher. Man, like I, I do believe that uh, that's a step backwards for AJ at this yeah. point. I do. It, it, it I'm is. a fan. I'm not even. I don't dislike Gallagher. I'm it's, a fan of Gallagher, but I do feel like that's a step backwards for AJ. Anytime you're, I just, I would. Okay, for as far as a fighter skill, for sure, mm -hmm. it's a step back. But it's anytime you're associating yourself with somebody that's surrounded by Conor McGregor, you know what I mean. Anytime you have like somebody that that it seems like that, it's just like that, that type of fighter. You got that. That it's just you're gonna get that extra media attention, that extra. I don't know, even what you want to call it. Yeah, but you know, I. As much as I'm a fan of Gallagher, as much as I'm a fan of smack talking, like it's like watching a generic version of Connor. Like it's not even a, I don't. It doesn't do nothing it's true. for me. Like when I watch it, I'm just like it's kind of cringy. But I feel like you're trying really, really hard, and like you might not be. That could actually mm -hmm. be who you are. I have no idea. I've never spoke one word yeah. to James Gallagher, so that could be completely authentic. He could just be a similar person to Connor McGregor. Who knows? Yeah, I don't. But I don't get the feel. Like, I don't get that same feel. You know I, I mean? I'd agree with you, but they're still pu they're pushing. Bellator is pushing it they're that way. They're pushing him. They're yeah. absolutely pushing James Gallagher. He's a, I mean, he's got a stiff competition on his hands, but mm. they've also fed him a guy in Chinzo Machida that kind of fits into his skill set. Like, yeah. he could take him down and choke him out. Yeah. He could do that. You yeah. know what I mean? D does he have to watch out for his striking? Absolutely, 100%. Chinzo Machida could knock James Gallagher unconscious. For sure. That could happen. Yeah. You know? Um, but we're gonna see. But I, I personally think AJ does James McGallagher or James Gallagher. Well, he's like he said it there. He has to close the distance. And anytime you have like, uh, when you have like a leg kick that that devastating, or even his, his hands, you know. Right. And the th the thing is, is that you know who they've put Gallagher in there with guys that aren't great wrestlers. They're not great. I mean, Anthony Taylor says he's a wrestler, but he's not. Yeah. He's not a wrestler. He has no college wrestling experience. He has no. You know, he has no high-level wrestling experience. Mm -hmm. It's just he had to call himself something, so he called himself a wrestler. Yeah. So I do feel like, you know, AJ is too good a wrestler. Like He's got that McKee yeah. wrestling, man. Yeah, his dad's just Pops. made sure he has that high-level pedigree. And people don't realize that AJ's been around this game since he was eight years old. Like, this is a guy that's seen this game. Like, he's not just seven fights in, eight fights in. He's a lifetime in. Yeah. You know, he's it's been one training. Of those, it's one of those uh, fights I think you could make money on for sure. Absolutely, because like that's that's what my point originally is, like the Conor McGregor thing. No, Regardless right. if you if you buy it into it or buy into it or not, that that the odds are gonna just you're, sway you're a little right. bit. You're hundred percent right. Like it's the it's this it's the it's the fight that'll sell. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, one hundred percent. But McKee's gonna run through him. I would agree with you, on, like for sure. And and long and and the the good part about that is like if you're Bellator, this is a win win situation. Because if Gallagher beats McKee, it's like, okay, he beat somebody legit, yeah. and you really can give him that push. Mm -hmm. But if McKee beats Gallagher, then it's like, hey, man, like McKee's the real deal. Yeah, superstar. Like, now you have a bona fide young star. Yeah. And then yeah, then uh, Gallagher yeah. can take a step back and, and build right. himself back up again. Yeah, I think it's a great fight. But like, uh, fortunately, Gallagher's all locked up right now. Yeah, he's locked up. We're gonna see what happens though, because you got to think AJ came out of this unscathed. Anyhow, Gallagher goes in there and takes out Machida unscathed. You got to think that that fight's next. Yeah, it's gonna be a battle for sure. You have to think that fight's next. Mm -hmm. Like, because I mean, Gallagher is not. Um, both of them, I think, are a fight away from Pitbull. At least a fight away from Pitbull. Yeah. I mean, Mazada. Yeah, he's tough. He was extremely dangerous, but he wasn't. He's not the name. He's not. You think that. Strauss? You think it would even Strauss make any sense at all? Maybe just no, no. absolutely not. No, I wouldn't. Even if he wanted to be on the like the one eighty card and they offered it up, I don't see why he would. I mean, it's tough. Yeah. I guess. I. I mean, may, yeah. I mean, he's a name and he's a former champ. It definitely would get you where you want to go. Yeah. Um, but coming off a lie, I don't know. It would. Yeah, maybe, maybe. 
but I don't know if Strauss would be is, is going to be willing to jump right back into that, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes people like to take a minute after losing a title like that and really evaluate what went on, how what went wrong, try to close up those holes instead of just leaping back in there. If we'll AJ wants to make that record too that he's talking about, he, yeah. might, he might have to take somebody on short notice, like you said. Or yeah, we're gonna yeah. see what happens. I mean, you know what I'm looking forward to for him fighting with his old man too. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I'd like to see that the old man. Barry Bonds kind of thing going on. Griffey. Listen, man, we had a. The, you know, we got to wrap this up, but, you know, we had a really, really great show tonight. Uh, Jordan Young, you know, all three guys, 22, all three of them undefeated, the futures of the sport, and it's a bright future. It's looking good. Sure. Um, AJ, uh, you know, I, th- I thank AJ for coming. I thank Jordan for coming. I thank Jerome for, for coming on the show. They, they, they made it a great show. And uh, hopefully you guys will be back next week with episode six. Should be a good one. And uh, that's from me, Jason Sutcliffe, heading out. Tristan, Ketty, see you guys later. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next week with episode six. Have a good night. Peace, guys.